Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be talking about the PE header, why the PE header is important for static analysis. We'll be then taking a look at the, the structure of the PE header, the various sections, etc. And then finally, we'll take a look at the sections themselves and uh, what data they contain and their various permissions, right? So we have quite a lot of information to cover. So let's get started. So what is the PE header and why is it important? Well, the PE header contains all the information that the operating system requires to run the executable. So that gives you an idea, first of all, as to how important this can be for static analysis, because it can give us an idea of the information that the uh, that the executable requires, which means we can understand, okay, if it's requiring this information, uh, then, you know, it, it's going to relate to this piece of functionality, etc. So the information is very useful as it can give us information about the functionality of the malware. So that's primarily why it's important. Now, when you talk about the other reasons as to why the PE header is very important in terms of static analysis, well, first of all, as we've already taken a look at, is it contains important and necessary information required by the OS to execute the executable. So it contains information about the executable. So it contains information uh, like the optional header, for example, right? It contains information like the sections table, stuff like that. Very important information that is required to perform or to execute this executable or malware. Secondly, it contains information that specifies where the executable needs to be loaded into memory. Now, this will close or tie in very closely to dynamic analysis, right? So we'll take a look at that when, it, when, when the time comes. Uh, thirdly, it contains the libraries that the executable requires to be loaded. So again, this will give us a clear idea of the libraries that uh, that this ex executable requires, which means we will then know the functions that are being called uh, by the executable, which then tells us, of course, uh, the functionality of this piece of malware or the executable in general. And lastly, it contains information that specifies where the execution begins. Again, that will close. Uh, that will tie in very closely to dynamic analysis, all right? So now that we understand uh, why it's important, let's take a look at the structure. Let's break it down and understand the various sections as we've already been doing earlier on in this, uh, in, the, in this series or in the static analysis section, right? So let's start off with the MZ header or the DOS header as it's commonly referred to as. What's the purpose of this header? Well, it essentially defines the file as an executable binary. So it's essentially saying, I am executable. That's the purpose uh, of the MZ header or the DOS header. Uh, secondly is the DOS stub. The DOS stub is again, uh, its purpose is very simple and it exists primarily for compatibility. Its job is to essentially uh, print out the message. This program cannot be run in DOS mode. We took a look at that when we were analyzing the portable executable and its strings, right? Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the PE file header, which essentially contains the signature as the most important piece of information. So these following sections are now where we can find most of the important information. So uh, it defines the executable as a portable executable, right? So it's there to provide a bit of a context into what executable we're, we're dealing with. Uh, we then have the image optional header or also known as the optional header. So this again is very important. We have very important information can be found there. So it stores important information about the executable, like the subsystem and the entry point, to name a few. We'll be taking a look at this uh, in the following videos. We then have the sections table, all right? So the sections table contains instructions on how to load the executable into memory. Now, uh, this is very different uh, from the sections themselves. As I know, for those of you who are already familiar with malware analysis, you'll already know what I'm talking about. So the sections themselves are sections of code or data and or data that are used by the executable. So you might be asking, well, uh, what type of data are you referring to in regards to the sections? Well, uh, let me explain something. When talking about any portable executable, it really doesn't have to be a piece of malware. It's best to sort it out into two categories. You have your header and then you have your sections, all right? So your header contains details about the executable. The sections themselves contains the, uh, co contains the data and the code for the executable. So if you sort it out into these two categories, it becomes a whole lot easier to understand what's going on. So these sections contain the actual content and the code and the data for this portable executable. So the sections are then sorted out into all of these various sections here, which I'm going to explain. 
All right, so the code or the dot text section contains executable code. All right, so if you see that section, you know that this portable executable has executable code. Next on, we have the data section. The, da the data section stores data that can uh, be written to, uh, that can be read and written to, so read and write permissions. All right, you then have the R data section. Now, one thing to take into consideration is you may not find all of these sections. These sections and their availability will, uh, again, give you an idea as to the functionality and the workings of this portable executable. So the R data section contains uh, or stores data that is only that can only be you can only read from it. You cannot write uh, to it or execute it. Right. You then have the I data. Now the I data stores the import table, right? Very important information here, which we'll be taking a look at as well. And then you have the E data, which stores the export data. Now, one thing to take into consideration, if you do not find the I data and the E data sections, it doesn't mean that it does not contain the import table or any export data or information. It means that they could be also loaded into the R data section right over here. If this seems a little bit confusing, don't worry at all. We've already taken a look at this and I'll explain it as we move along. We then have the resources section. Now the resources section contains uh, the resources for the binary or the executable. So it, st it stores uh, resources like strings, uh, icons, you know, just to name a few. Again, we'll be exploring the resources as, as we move along. Now, we have already taken look a look at sections before in this series. Uh, if you don't remember, I covered this in one of the first videos when we were analyzing our, our, our malware sample and we used, uh, I think it was PEID as the tool and we were able to see the various sections when it was packed and when it wasn't packed, right? And you could see that when we used an open source packer like UPX, it changes the section names to an abbreviated uh, name of the packer. So for example, for UPX, when you're, when you're dealing with a packed uh, malware sample, if you take a look at the section names, you will see that their names will not be coded R data, R data. You will see that they will be changed to UPX, UPX1, etc. So that's another good indicator that your, your sample has been packed in case you're wondering. Just a little qu a quick, quick tip there in case you're wondering. So uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. We'll now get started on taking a look at uh, the imports and exports. Uh, the uh, the optional header, the resources, etc. So I'll be seeing you in the next videos.